In this screencast, I'm going to talk to you about the Peng Robinson equation of state. So the equation is shown here P equals RT divided by V minus B. So this is the term that we see for Bradley Kwong and for Van der Waals. And then that's minus A of T divided by V times V plus B plus B times V minus B. So this is getting a bit more complicated in terms of this term here that's uh, accounting for the attractive forces between molecules. And then the, the further terms are, are defined here. So A of T that's shown here uh, equals alpha times A of TC. And that's the equation for A of TC is shown here. The equation for B is given here. Alpha then de depends on temperature and critical temperature and it also depends on kappa. And kappa is given in terms of omega, uh, which is the eccentric factor. Uh, the eccentric factor um, sort of is to do with the shape of the molecule. So it depends how spherical it is. Uh, for a completely spherical um, molecule or atom, then this is zero. So for most of the noble gases, this turns out to be zero, for example. Okay. So in terms of modifications, compared to Redlich Wong, the term that accounts for the attraction between gas molecules now includes improved temperature dependency, and the equation now incorporates the eccentric factor to take into account the gas molecule shape, which actually has a big impact on its phase behaviour. So advantages is that it uh, provides good accuracy near the critical point for liquid molar volumes, so that's a good improvement on Redlich Kwong and also it can be used to predict vapour liquid equilibria uh, with good accuracy when compared uh, when, when you combine it with the appropriate mixing rules. So this is getting a bit more advanced um, but it, it does have that advantage that it can be used for vapour liquid equilibrium. Now calculation wise all the equations have just been implemented here um, so this has just got you know critical parameters for CO2 because that's the molecule that we're that's the gas that we're using as an example um, then these different things have been put in so eccentric factor is just something that is looked up in a table we then calculate kappa from that we can then calculate a of t b of t and then for each temperature we've got an a of t value uh, which is calculated and using all of this we can use temperature molar volume and actually calculate a pressure using the Peng Robinson equation for different temperatures different uh, molar volumes now if we plot all of this out we see this behavior um, uh, very similar to what we've seen before but now we've got much better agreement between the literature values and the calculated values so um, particularly for the bubble point lines you can see there's a lot better uh, agreement there and again this spreadsheet is available to download so that you can have a look at this in your own time and have a bit of a play to sort of see what's happening but just to illustrate you know again we've got an isotherm here that is below the critical temperature it's got three roots the middle root doesn't have any physical meaning but the the root on the right is uh, given as the dew point and the root on the left is giving us the bubble point so overall that is how you can use peng robinson equation of state to start to predict a phase diagram for pressure volume um, plots.